Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman, and I am obsessed with the digital keyboard synergy. As an aside, if you're looking for a name for your company, don't call it something like digital keyboards. Not that Google existed in 1980, but it certainly is not a unique sounding name. The Synergy was more or less digital keyboards only product. I say more or less because they released a 2 plus version of the Synergy that looks identical from the front. The original Synergy was basically a preset machine. There were 24 buttons on the front that you could use to quickly recall one of the 24 presets in ROM, and you could also plug in cartridges that had more presets. The 2 Plus replaced a couple of chips on the motherboard with some daughter boards that would add MIDI capability and the ability to program the unit over RS-232. Now, as you'll see here, the daughter boards are connected with a terrible technique. Basically, there's wire wrap pins that are jammed down into IC sockets. And as you'll see on the Tontech website here, this is basically a recipe for disaster. So if somebody sends you a Synergy and it's having problems, open it up and check these kinds of connections. I usually wind up having to pull the boards out, shove them back in, and then repeat that process until the thing finally works. It's very frustrating. This video by Alpha Studio shows how you can program your own sounds on the Synergy using a K-Pro computer running a program called Synx. It's a fairly complicated process. Junkie XL had a setup, but I think he wound up selling it. And I've used it on various different films. A lot of it is being used in uh, Justice League, the Snyder Cut. It was also used for Distance Between Dreams. And Donald Fagan used the Synergy on his album, The Nightfly. But by far the most well-known user of the Synergy is Wendy Carlos. She used it on the soundtrack to the movie Tron, as well as her albums Digital Moonscapes and Beauty and the Beast. In particular, on Beauty and the Beast, the Synergy allowed Wendy to explore alternate tunings. As an aside, 12 Tone has a great video on this kind of stuff. Wendy also uses the Synergy in some parts of her tutorial album, Secrets of Synthesis. I actually heard both Wendy Carlos for the first time and the Synergy for the first time on a flexible record that came with a keyboard magazine article by Dominic Milano. Oh, here it is on eBay. Speaking of the used market, original synergies are rare and expensive nowadays. There's a sample pack by UVI called Energy, and there's another fancy sample pack for Centronic by IK Multimedia called the Center V. But what really grabbed my attention and should grab your attention is Synergia, which is a soft synth version of the Synergy that can work as a plugin in your DAW or as a standalone application and it's available for Mac and Windows. In fact, Synergia is what I used to create the sound at the start of this video. I haven't compared it one-on-one -on -one with my actual hardware Synergy, but based on what I remember, it sounds pretty close. And this isn't surprising because Synergia is actually running the original Z80 code from the firmware in the Synergy. And the synthesis hardware is extremely well documented in this paper titled Music Synthesis Using Real-Time Digital Techniques by Ha Alice in the Proceedings of the IEEE. Like the Synergy that it's emulating, Synergia doesn't have any built-in patch editing capability. And that's where Synergize comes in. Synergize replicates the functionality of the Synx program that ran on the K-Pro, but it has a much more modern, much more pleasant user interface experience. You can use it to program a real Synergy, avoiding the need of using an actual K-Pro or a CPM emulator, or it can interface with an instance of Synergia running on your computer. I think ideally having a single program that combines the functionality of both programs would be ideal, but this is what we have for now, and I have to give major kudos to the people who wrote Synergia and Synergize. And it's this combination of Synergia and Synergize that I'll be using in future videos, where I'll do a deep dive into the synthesis architecture and how it's implemented. 
The Synergy has its roots in this beast called either the Bell Lab Synthesizer or the Hal Alice Synthesizer. And the Computer Music Journal article describing it here titled A Portable Digital Sound Synthesis System is being a little optimistic about the word portable. According to Wikipedia, portable here means around 300 pounds. You can find a video demonstration on YouTube that includes a performance by Roger Powell. And I also recommend everyone check out this performance by Laurie Spiegel. And it looks like as of 2016, the synthesizer was still alive. The Hal Alice machine was a research unit. It's not something that you could commercialize. So the technology was shrunk down a little bit and became the Krumar GDS, the General Development System. Only about five or six of these were sold probably. Wendy Carlos was one customer, as was Klaus Schutz. But eventually this turned into the Synergy and was basically a development system for programming the Synergy. The GDS is described in this computer music journal paper titled an inexpensive digital sound synthesizer. And it turns out it's basically a standard S100 bus system with the custom digital synthesis hardware bolted on. And by inexpensive, we mean around $30,000. The Synergy, on the other hand, only cost $5,295. A spinoff of digital keyboards called Mulogix basically repackaged the Synergy as a rack unit called the Slave 32. And these are even more rare than the Synergy. And this one was sold by Help I Have Too Much Gear in Atlanta, Georgia. How did I not know about this? Anyway, the Slave 32, the Synergy, and the GDS all have the same digital synthesis hardware. So as far as I know, they can all make the same sounds. So, to get ready for what's coming, download Synergia. Go to the Synergy group on groups.io, go to the file section, and go to firmware in the file section. And in the firmware folder, you'll find four data files that is the firmware for the Synergy. You'll need to download these in order to get Synergia to work because Synergia doesn't come with these files. You'll also want to pick up Synergy Voice Library.zip, which has a bunch of patches in it. Oh, I should warn you that Synergia installs itself in your user applications directory and not your main applications directory. So I just wanted to let you know about that because that confused me for a minute or two. And of course, download and install Synergize. And the developer of Synergize is awesome. I found a bug and they fixed it basically the next day. Okay, here I have Synergize and Synergia running. If I try to connect to Synergia right now, I won't see it because I need to go to my Synergia and click on VRAM. Now, if I click on connect, it should show me that instance of Synergia running. I say, okay. And now what I can do is I can pick some voice. Let's say let's go into the Wendy Carlos files and I'll pick this vibraphone, I guess. All right, so I can go into voicing mode now. And now that voicing mode is enabled. There's my vibraphone. And I can go in and change the FM configuration from this additive sound to an actual FM sound. And we'll have some fun. Oh, a few other things I wanted to mention before we close out. There is this patent associated with the Alice synthesizer you can check out. Like most patents, it's nearly impossible to read, but it's there if you're interested. In addition to the groups.io Synergy group I mentioned earlier, there's also a Facebook Synergy group that you can join. It has a file section that overlaps some with the group.io file section, but there are some things on the Facebook file section that aren't on group.io's file section and vice versa. 
In addition to the sample packs I mentioned earlier, Danny Wilson of Hideaway Studio, who performed a restoration on a Krumar GDS, created a sample pack called Synergenesis. Unfortunately, this does require the full version of Contact. Okay, last thing. Everyone should go watch Alex Ball's video titled How the Tron Music Was Made. He doesn't actually use a synergy or anything related to it in this video, but the video is awesome, so you should go watch it. And if somebody who lives near Alex has a Synergy and K-Pro setup, they should bring it over to Alex and have him make a video about it.